G'day everyone, here's another Black Pine video. However, this isn't about refinement and this isn't about butt selection. This is about having some more raw material and what do you do with raw material? Now, pretty much, I think Black Pines, you can pretty much work on them throughout the year if they're in the development stage, as this tree is. This is a young little tree that we started in the Bonzo Northwest Club. Um, we picked up young little seedlings and we put twists and bends in them just how how Han from Balak Nursery has um, showed us in the few, in the past so what we did was we twisted them up and bent them up as they were seedlings um, you probably come in and see some close-ups you can see the bends that I put in early on in the tree at the base very important to get some movement into any tree you get when you start you don't want a straight trunk unless you're building, doing a formal upright. So you can see the nice bends I've got in there, nice curves, um, yeah. What's happened is I've just left the tree as it is. And what's happened is we've got some nice big, well not nice, but long big shoots taken over a long strip, as, as, they, as they are, they're apically dominant there. You know, they just want to grow straight up. Black pines, most trees in general anyway, want to grow straight up. So we need to take care of that. So with this tree, I don't do any bud selection or needle plucking at this time of year or at all because it's in development. In development, you need as much foliage on the tree as you can uh, because you know what? Most of these branches aren't gonna be in the final design. Most of the, most of the candles, most of the shoots, obviously, um, anything like that, it's not, not, it's not gonna be in the final design. What you're working on is getting your, getting your trunk, the, start, the position you want, the style you want, the movement you want, the size you want, etc. For that, for then in the future, all the new buds that you get on the tree can actually form the real part of the tree. So this is just a matter of today, I'm just gonna put some heavy wire on these branches and get them twisted up again and shrunk down. I don't know what design we'll come up with, but we'll just wanna shrink those those um, long spindly branches down. Like this, this, this bit here, had, an, had some nice movement initially. So you can see it's got some nice movement initially. That could eventually be one of the main trees or main only keep that part of the tree. The rest could be gone. But what happened is this is all gone straight. So I let that grow too long and let that go straight. So yeah, got to get rid of that. Got to, got to bend that up. Also found this young guy, little guy at the back here that's grown on. We're going to twist that up. Maybe that could end up being part of the future or could be just I think I might leave that as what's called a sacrifice branch so if I leave that alone and let it just grow right out that's going to get really fat and heavy and what we'll do is we'll fatten this base bit up here down for us which you can see it's a little bit skinny a little bit skinnier than in this curvy which isn't ideal we don't want that reverse taper so I'm hoping if I let that guy go don't touch it just let it what I'll do is I'll pluck all this bit off and just leave the tip so the tip can just go boom as fast as it can to, to to go thick as it can and grow out so that's what a sacrifice branch does on on pines or well, most trees if you leave it that area will fatten up so i'm hoping that area below here will fatten up with this branch just taking over and taking control but the rest this branch and this branch i will be wiring up trying to bend them and twist them down. You might see me plucking off some needles or cutting off some some bits and pieces because you can see with plines they form that five or six in one spot. Remember how um, I showed you my ramification and bud selection pines they you know they have multiple from one spot you only want to reduce to two well this is what happens you get so many in one spot that just becomes very fat what I want to ideally do is probably cut back to one because I want that to go and shoot off because um, that'll help when I bend this up, it'll help, you know, with the bend, setting the bend um, to, a, to the shape I want quicker. So let's get started. All right, so I will try and keep my voice as loud as possible. Um, I've, heard, <laughs> I've heard some feedback about my voice not being so loud and I don't have uh, very good equipment in terms of microphones, etc. So I will try and talk as loud as I can, but you've probably seen this technique before about wiring up and bending, um, twisting up branches 
Um, Han's very good at this. If you, if you know Han and Balak Bonsai, he does this very well. Um, and this is a technique I learned and developed over the years with his um, guidance as well. So it's about a, I try and use as heavy gauge as I can. Like that is some serious gauge aluminium wire. You can see the, the size difference there. Oh, you can see it's pretty much clo it's close as I can get to the thickness of the branch I want to bend. It's probably more than half the thickness. Um, that's the heaviest I've got. I've got nothing else. I use aluminium because it's easier to manipulate and bend into place. Um, I'm going to use, I'm going to wire both, both the branches up with the one wire. So even though this is pretty much the same thickness as the wire, it doesn't matter because what we're doing is bending and twisting them and don't want them to break. Um, and that's what the heavy wire does. It really doesn't let them break. Um, so I'm just going to get stuck into this and wire it up. Hopefully you guys can see pretty clearly and can hear me nice and well as well. So let's have a go. So when you work with heavy wire, you just got to be a bit careful um, because they can break smaller branches and if you don't use both hands. So I'm just going to anchor this big wire around the base, this corner here, this, this bit here, this um, branch, branch off here. I'm anchoring it around it for the support. So. Start is always the hardest when you start off wiring this heavy, but once you get flowing, it should be a lot easier to do. I wouldn't worry about if you break little branches and little things like that, don't worry too much because you know what? You're going to get a prolific amount in the future with the with um, back budding on younger trees, so you shouldn't have any problems. So. so, you can see now, once I've started, it's pretty easy to get going. You got to use both hands. So that's good there. Now I'll go back to the little guy here. Much harder on the smaller, smaller branch, of course. You can use pliers, but I just like to use my hands. Might have to resort to the pliers now. <laughs> Just can't get the bend in that I want. Because it's already done, it's already bent and it's really low to the ground. So I'm not able to get my hands in there. So I'll just use my pliers to get into there and get it around. That's better. So wiring can be fun. When it's heavy, it's hard work. So because we had, we've got all these curves in it already, it's a little bit trickier because you've got to follow the curves. Um, once you get going, it should be okay.
So you can see I finished, finished uh, short of wiring this whole one up. That's because I want to wire this guy and these guys together with a slightly smaller one. So finishing it off with a couple of turns around the main branch gives me the strength to then wire this and this guy, these two guys together and just get some bends in a bit later. So the most important is bending this little section here, getting that a bit tighter and smaller and closer together. So I'll finish off the big guy, this should be much easier. Don't worry about all the needles, it doesn't really matter. Just pop them away if you want to, just to make, make it look pretty. I'm going to put this in my lap, it's a bit easier to hold if you've got no one to help you. So it's in my lap. I'm fussed about those, as I mentioned. Okay. So that's two of the two of the branches mainly um, wired up. Now, you would have seen multiple videos before, but um, you just try and manipulate and twist them up. You can use pliers. I like to try and just use my hands because I can feel, I can feel the, the, the weight I'm pushing on the wire, so I don't want to snap the branch. I don't know, I just feel I can have more control when I use my hands. So I'm trying to compact this much closer. So I'll try and bring it in. So I'm trying to get really nice tight twists in there. Because I like this little guy as the main tree, maybe, in the future. Could be a really nice little tree there. So, but I've got to get the twists in now, you can see. So I've gone back, forward, sideways, every way. Don't go just side to side. You've got to go backwards and forwards as well. pretty much I reckon that's pretty nice and tight there that could be a nice tree in the future now I want to get these two wired up as well I don't need these ones as I mentioned you don't want to you can just want the the, the the top the um apical growth that's the most important because that pushes out and actually sets the and grows makes the branch go really fast and sets the branch quicker in the position you want it to be Obviously, the more foliage you leave, the more energy it's going to get into that spot. So it's very important to get the energy into that um, branch and area. So very important to keep the, the tips. Let me see if I can bend this guy without um, doing substantial damage. So you can see that that's one move and it's already down quite a bit. Um, Like I want to go down further, so that when I go down and maybe back. It's quite easy, it's moving quite, quite easily. It's not, not, not proving difficult at the moment. Just using both hands, my thumb is very much important. My left thumb sits sits on the branch where the wires are, so to enable me to bend where I'm trying to trying to where I've got my thumb.
there you go. That was pretty quick and pretty easy, I think. I think you hopefully saw how easy that was. Um, that, that was straight up here. Now it's actually curled and twisted into a number of curls and twists. Um, what I'd like to try and do is push this side down a bit more. To try and get that down more, like, and then gives a bit more less contrived, trying to do it less contrived um, look. However, what this does is now it's going to set a new curve in the, in the trunk, new twists and turns. I don't know if that's going to be the best tree, but we're just trying to give it a go. See if this works out to be really well. I left the tip there. There's some nice tips here that will grow off as well. Fatten that whole area up and make it thicker. So we've done that. As you said, I left this guy, which is my sacrifice branch. You can see that clearly. Um, I put a bit of wire on this and just wire these two. Maybe twist them up a little bit just to give it a bit more character. Because maybe this little guy is the new future. Or, you know, eventually maybe this guy is going to be the nice... Maybe both are going to be used, not sure. But what you're doing now is your... This is a you know stock material. If you want to get twists in your trees, don't be don't be scared to even twist up that size branches. I mean, I think I use six mil aluminium. I think it's six, um, yeah, which is pretty pretty solid, solid. So you can really get some bends and twists into there. But now that doesn't have a straight portion yet, except for this bit here. I know the candles are. I mean, these candles are a bit straight, but the main branches, the main trunks, main branches now are twisted, which is what I like in my trees. Much more interesting we don't really have yamadori here or black ponds to collect anywhere so we really are stuck so you got to be you know you got to be creative as han is and you know a lot of people are following his techniques so it's really good um, to, to build and develop trees uh, better for the future so let me just get some wire for this guy and of course can't find my size So I'm probably using wire the thickness of that branch. Um, you can probably see that clearly. It's about the same thickness. Whatever you can get, doesn't really matter in this case. So that's pretty easy, pretty easily wired up, nothing too, nothing too hard there. So now I'm just going to twist up maybe this young little guy, twist it back on itself, twist it forward, play around with you know, a few of the moves until I like, get the shape I like. It's really about just compacting the branch compacting it. Do you know what I mean by squishing it in? Just, that's really what it's about. Um, the twists and turns you put in is just about making it compact. 
Hopefully today you guys can hear me a lot better. I'm trying to speak up as much as I can. I don't have the most powerful voice, surprisingly. Um, it's very deep. But yeah, it's, um, hopefully you guys can hear me a lot better today and um, you can see what I'm doing. What I what I think what I'm thinking if I do keep that it'd be a nice little a little semi cascade or some sort of small cascading type tree very cute and small there so I'm trying to put that trying to shape that into that position now never know might work might not but okay so there you go. Nice and I'll give a nice close up view of all this now. So you can see that's the um, smaller one. That's the smaller side one. It's all twisted up. The wire just holds it in place. Um, I wired this little guy a bit more. So I bent it down and you can have a look twisting it around. And just in a cascade. This is the little guy above it. Probably put some more curves in that if I really wanted doesn't really matter but yeah it's just just to give it a, so what I want what I was saying before I want to get it down more yeah, and twist and bend that's with one hand I should use two hands <laughs> but holding a camera and doing one hand that's the best I can do right now but yeah it's just about compacting it all and the big guy is this guy so you can see he was straight up and now he is twisted Quite nicely twisted around. I've tried to push it down, you can see it's going down, um, and then it comes back up. And it comes back up and twists around there, around there, and comes out to the side over here, giving that, that look of a tip. But you can see there's pretty much not one bit of straight branch now. There's your sacrifice branch, as I mentioned. Sacrifice branch will cut it off maybe when it's ready to final, you know, do start to do some final, um, you know, branch selection and picking the front of the tree, etc. But at this stage, I'm gonna let that guy go as much as he can. So I, I do want to strip. I did mention I want to strip some of this. Just pull it off with your fingers. Because what you want is you want that tip, this tip, to just shoot, shoot off. If you're never going to use this branch for anything else, then just sacrifice. So, yeah. so I can just leave that for now. Make sure. You could take more off if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, you just let it go. Doesn't matter. And just let it grow. As long as the apex, as long as this tip grows, that's the most important. Alright, hope you enjoyed that video, guys. And that's, a, that's how to treat, you know, trees that are in development not in refinement. Refinement is about butt selection, needle plucking, as in my other videos. You know, trees in development, this is what you should be doing, developing them, you know, twisting them, bending them, putting sh movement into them, you know, really giving it a go to, to make them interesting. Like that should be a little interesting tree in the future now. In a couple of years time, I think that will look quite good. We'll, see, and we'll revisit, revisit it in the future. As always, please subscribe and like my videos and invite your friends to come along and have a look and hopefully you learn a bit more. Thank you.